So, uh, when it all changed, the main motivation was that we wanted to extend the provider selection with custom strategies. Um, these strategies are pluggable, so you can define which one do you want to use and which one do you don't want to use, and it uses the decorator pattern to achieve that goal. Um, it's also chainable, so you have uh, you can have multiple uh, strategies at the same time, which can uh, or uh, influence the the outcome of the provider selection. And the uh, idea is that the default set of strategies is shared with conductor, but the admin can uh, define their own and extend on their own. Um, the other motivation was that we wanted random selection uh, to spread the load across providers. <coughs> and it has a huge benefit when you have a huge number of deployments. And probably it's the saner to uh, spread the load. So about the provider selection framework, uh, the main entities the strategy, uh, which is registered during uh, application boot. Uh, the chain of a strategy is just a module for uh, for the decorator pattern. So it mainly just delegates uh, the cause by a method missing. Uh, the match, it now has just one attribute, which is the provider account. But the plan is to extend it with hardware profiles, uh, front-end drums, uh, so it contains all the combination of the available <coughs> options. The priority group um, is the set for the matches. And the reason for priority group to exist is uh, that we want uh, direct ordering. So we want to enable a direct ordering of the matches. Uh, so when the provider selection choose uh, a match, it first goes to the priority groups and choose the priority group with the lowest uh, score. So it is also uh, ranked from lowest to highest. And, but within the priority group, um, the match is choose uh, with uh, random probability. And also the match also has the score as and it serves as the weight uh, for the probability distribution. Okay. And finally, the rank, uh, which is the outcome of, uh, of the strategy. So the strategies are, uh, <coughs> is input is the rank, and the output is the rank, and it has priority groups, and within the priority groups, it has matches. Um, for now, uh, we have two strategies in Conductor. The first is uh, strict order, um, and with strict order, a uh, new resource uh, appeared in Conductor, which is the user-defined priority groups. So the user has the option to define their own priority groups and um, define a strict ordering of the provider accounts. And the other one is penalty for failure, uh, which penalizes uh, provider accounts for failures. It has some options in which you can configure. Uh, uh, how many percentage? Yeah. So the question on the strict order is that this this is a system wide kind of you know, the admin sets the strict the same ordering across the system. It's not each user getting their own, right? Uh, yeah, the admin can uh, define it uh, for each pool. Okay, so so so, so it's at a pool level that's the strict yeah. ordering. Okay, <coughs> and and so the idea is each provider account is at a separate level or separate or you know, they rank the priority accounts just like uh, no. the old or no? No, uh, actually uh, when the uh, provider selection is initialized, uh, a default priority group is created and every provider account uh, is getting into okay. the default group. And the uh, user has the option to extend it uh, with other priority groups. Okay. And, then that, and then would that be on a, based on a provider account basis that they would decide this provider account is in one priority group, this one is in second? Uh, no, a uh, provider account can be in many priority groups. Right, so, so you move it to the next one. Yeah, yeah. But, but it also, in terms of, if there's more than one match for a provider account, you know, say if there's student realms that match mm -hmm. within that provider account, those will be the same priority group. Yeah. Um, so the penalty for failure 
uh, it has a few options. Uh, the percentage which you want to penalize the provider account for each failure, um, <coughs> the time interval, you want to consider the failures. And you have the third option, which is an optional one. Uh, you can decide, uh, so you can define a number after uh, when the failure number is exceeds its number, the provider account is excluded uh, if there is any other available provider account. I'm creating a new strategy. Uh, oh, and one more note. Uh, for one that one, uh, only the penalty for failure is shift. And the strict order is not the reason for that, that we are thinking about um, some refactoring of the prior groups. I will go back to that later. So creating a new strategy should be simple. You just create a new directory under rental provider selection strategies, and you just put two files in that. Uh, the strategy name RV, which mainly just holds configs and stuff like that. And the strategy RV, which is the actual implementation of the strategy. Um, and what basically every strategy do is just work on the rank. Uh, modify priority groups, modify the scores of the matches, um, and also you can define views uh, because for certain configuration you need views so that the uh, user uh, can set its value, and you can put it in vendor provider selection views and strategy view, and uh, edit HTML. The format is missing here. And you also have a, a dictionary for the provider selection, which is in config of yes. um, provider selection. Um, so about the future, uh, the next uh, strategy, uh, which is about to implement it, is the cost based selection strategy. Uh, Martin is also started working on that. Um, a graphical representation of the probabilities. Uh, I also started working on that because um, it was kind of hard for users to imagine uh, how each strategy will influence the, the provider selection. And uh, you get a hard time also to, to uh, verify if it's working or not. Uh, but with some user, uh, so when the user can see how the probabilities are, um, they can easily imagine. And uh, the, pro the graphical representation are on the provider, uh, the priority group server. So for each uh, priority group, you will have the probability distribution. And we are also discussed to somewhat refactor the strict order to a burst capacity, uh, which means that we won't allow the users to define multiple priority groups, just one, uh, because it will simplify things, while most of the use cases, 95% of the use cases, um, will be uh, handled with this one, uh, because mainly users want to use first their uh, private uh, clouds, and when they max out their private clouds, they want to use uh, public clouds as a fallback. Any question? I had a question which uh, you know, was in the other slides. Is, when you talk about the provider selection, is it based on the priority which we assign to the provider account or to the actual provider type? Uh, to the provider account. account. Yeah, and actually it for now just works um, as a weight for the probability distribution, but it should be changed because the priority attribute is, the name is quite misleading uh, because it came from the previous version. The previous version, yeah. Yeah, and, and we haven't refactored it yet, but uh, yeah, that's yeah, the Okay, okay, but I mean, if you have two accounts of the same type, mm -hmm. the random distribution is considering the two accounts as two different targets. 
Yeah, even if they are for the <coughs> same type. Yeah. So two accounts for EC2 mm -hmm. get twice the probability of the single account. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then we will leave the question about. Now, I think one of the future strategies is, in fact, to take into account capacity. And so, if you had, say, five provider accounts in the same priority group, and one was five times larger than the others, then we would sort of, in, we would use the probability um, distribution to say the larger accounts is going to get a greater share of the instances. Uh, I believe that's not a, that strategy doesn't exist today, though, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, one of the nice things, I think, about using a probabilistic model for deciding where to launch is you can do things like that. You yeah. say, this private cloud is, has three times the capacity of this yeah. one. So yeah. you want the proportion to be 75% on here, 25% on here. If you just set it up that way and you let it randomly decide with that probability distribution for each launch, you get that distribution without having to do a whole lot of state tracking and, and yeah. you know, keep a count of what's currently where. You know. Um, so you, you kind of get nice behaviors like that. Well, on the failure case, uh, it also works pretty well. But yeah, and, and then the other thing is... Because you, you, you don't immediately throw it away and stop using it because, you know, you don't, it could have been a transient problem. And so you, you know, whatever you configure, say you make it 10% less likely to use that provider on failure. Um, you still try, but not as much. And the more failures you get, the less you try. Yeah. Um, but you still give it some chances to attempt so that if it comes back up again, you'll, you'll find out automatically. That is for the interval, the time interval. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Does that does that pretty much cover the whole thing, Amber? Yeah. <clears throat> Brief to the point. I like it. Um, <clears throat> Angus, do we have anybody have other questions on provider selection? Well, actually, I did have one. You mentioned that right now it's just the provider account. Um, I know from the previous um, you know, code base before we, we implemented this. Um, the match is actually a combination of provider account, realm, image, and hardware profile. The idea being you might have two different matches on the same account because they differed in realm or they differed in hardware profile or possibly even an image, so that won't happen right now. But if you have two different images that match, um, is, the, is the intent to go back to including that, that full amount so that... Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Is it right that the uh, instance match is just a, uh, let's say, help from model for the algorithm? Um, actually, I think the algorithm is not really used or just one place. I think instance match is okay. Is that the class we're still using in the new? Sorry? Is instance match the class we're using in the new code for matching still? Uh, There's no, a class uh, instance match. Instance match is, I think, when a new deployment is created, uh, the instance matches are also created to um, to detect uh, where to launch it. And but then the provider section algorithm will choose which one to use. <coughs> yeah. So 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 the instance match are all the valid matches that you feed into provider selection. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, and then this uh, the realm. The thing is, the instance match does include the realm and the hardware profile and all those other mm -hmm. metadata. I'm trying to verify that the concept of having two models instance match at instance hardware profile is really correct. Yeah, I think that that's, I think that's a different issue that really is not part of this. We can talk more later on, later on that. But it's the instance hardware profile is specific to I'm launching this instance with this RAM, this CPU, and this hardware profile. But that is a, a, a characteristic, a metadata of the running instance, which is really different from the Let's pick a provider and figure out what the image, the RAM, and all that would be. That's what the instance match comes in. It's a more general thing of if you have several things that you could you go to launch and there's five places it could launch, instance matches give you those five places. But the instance hardware profile is something that when you do launch, this is what we're giving Delta Cloud as to what the RAM is, what the CPU is, and what the base hardware profile is, and that kind of stuff.